Chapter 5 To Mary White Minneapolis, Minnesota, October 9, 1888 Dear Daughter Mary, We arrived at this place yesterday at about 10 o'clock a.m. It had rained all night and rained all day Wednesday. Tuesday night we had births in palace car. There were no births, and we were given births in the drawing room car. Had nice chance, but could not get Will to leave the company and come in the sleeper. And it was not a very pleasant night for those in the day coaches. Passengers were so crowded. We arrived safely and were pleasantly located in two good hired rooms, richly furnished with plush chairs and sofas. Willie's room was next to ours, but it did not look just in place to pile all our trunks and bundles in these nicely furnished rooms. We had to walk a few rods to our meals. We decided to find other rooms, and we found rooms in the boarding house, hired for that purpose, and we have, Sarah and I, one room plainly furnished, but it has the blessings of a fireplace which is of value you well know to me. Will has a chamber above with stove in his room. Two brethren sleep in a bed in the same room. Then they have a small room for to do their writing in, and Willie is just as pleased with this as he can be. I spoke Thursday morning. There is a large number assembled of our ministering brethren, and I do not know but a few of them. Today, Friday at nine o'clock, I read some important matter to the conference, and then bore a very plain testimony to our brethren. This had quite an effect upon them. Elder Butler has sent me a long letter, a most curious production of accusations and charges against me, but these things do not move me. I believe it was my duty to come. I worry nothing about the future, but try to do my duty for today. I shall have to go to Battle Creek with Willie and spend some little time, since the severe trial I passed through in Heldsburg, I think things of a like character will not have such an influence upon me again. I am glad Willie is where we can look after him a little, and he look after us. I think it bad to be in different houses, but we are hoping and praying to see the work of God move forward just in that manner as shall reflect glory to God and good to his people." Elder Goodrich is here from Maine, Elder Underwood from Ohio, Sands Lane and his brother Otto Godsmark, Decker from Oregon, Corliss, U. Smith, Van Horn, Sanborn, Fargo, Rupert, Dr. Wagner and wife, many, many I cannot think of now. We do not forget you, but we pray for you. We long to see the power and spirit of God working upon the hearts of our ministers. We long to see that humility which we must have to do the work of God acceptably. Everything is done here that can be done to furnish good clean bedding and good wholesome food. Elder Smith and Butler are very loath to have anything said upon the law in Galatians, but I cannot see how it can be avoided. We must take the Bible as our standard, and we must diligently search its pages for light and evidences of truth. While the sun is setting and I cannot see very good, please write us often as you can, if it is only a word or two, and I will try to write quite often to you. Sunday morning, October 14. Yesterday was a very important period in our meeting. Elder Smith preached in forenoon upon the signs of the times. It was, I think, a good discourse, timely. In the afternoon I spoke upon 1 John 3, Behold what manner of love, etc. The blessing of the Lord rested upon me and put words in my mouth, and I had much freedom in trying to impress upon our brethren the importance of dwelling upon the love of God much more and let gloomy pictures alone. The effect on the people was most happy. Believers and unbelievers bore testimony that the Lord had blessed them in the word spoken, and that from this time they would not look on the dark side and dwell upon the great power of Satan, but talk of the goodness and the love and compassion of Jesus, and praise God more. At the commencement of the Sabbath, 
Elder Farnsworth preached a most gloomy discourse, telling of the great wickedness and corruption in our midst, and dwelling upon the apostasies among us, and there was no light, no good cheer, no spiritual encouragement in this discourse. There was a general gloom diffused among the delegates to the conference. But the Lord gave me testimony calculated to encourage. My own soul was blessed, and light seemed to spring up amid the darkness." I am not attending meetings today. Last evening we had several of the ministering brethren together and read a long communication from Elder Butler, which kept us up till ten o'clock at night. This morning they had an excellent social meeting. Today they have a Bible reading upon predestination or election. Tomorrow noon the law in Galatians is to be brought up and discussed. There is a good humble spirit among the delegates as far as we can learn, The letter written by Elder Butler was a good thing to open this question, so we are in for it. Charlie Jones came yesterday, Sabbath morning. WCW has gone to visit Elder Madison, who is in the city two miles from the meeting. The report is he is sick. Elder Corliss is sick. We fear he may have the run of a fever unless the Lord shall stay the progress of disease. John and Sarah are at work upon notes of the discourses I have given. It is cold and has been foggy here most of the time since we have been here. I shall be pleased to see the beautiful God-given sunshine once more. I wish I knew how many were at the meeting. Perhaps I can tell you in my next letter. I hope to hear from our home across the way soon. I have received no letter since I came here. It is getting dark, and I will say good night. Love to all the dear ones in the family, Sister McComber, Babe, and the dear children. Mother I was going to write to our family, but things have transpired so I could not. We'll write them if I can tomorrow. Mother